Good morning, I'm Sam Moores, and I thought today I would go through the F40. I'd do a little bit of a review of my car. I realised I haven't done this in a while. I don't know whether I've ever done a review of, it, of the F40. It's like a review, I've just sort of talked about it as my car. But I'll give you a little look round and to tell you what it's like to live, own, drive an F40. As you can see, it's in the garage. Now, this garage is not not pristine. It's, I think, like most garages, it's got some skis in the back, it's got some bikes, some washing stuff, all sorts of things. But here it is, F40 Blue. I'm not really a sort of personalised number plate person, but I knew that F40 plates were reasonably easy to get hold of. And I just came across this, and it's, it's not a very expensive plate at all, and thought yeah, well, that would look pretty great on this car and it's it's been good through the back you can see the straight pipes i've got a tubey style set up and just this amazing shapes of this car now all of these holes actually when it rains if you leave your car overnight and it rains things get a bit damp and it doesn't like life too much i've i've only had that once and have since tried to avoid it or, or just put a cover over, you know, just some sort of something, like a cloth or whatever, a blanket over the back overnight to keep it from getting too, too wet. It's fine if it rains when you're driving along. Now, there is no central locking on this car. So I've got a little key. There we go. Unlocked. Time to get in, start it up and then very quickly escape from this area before I absolutely annoy all of my neighbours. It's not too bad getting in. Oh, I've got this massive sill here. If you can open the door tons, it's a lot easier. Turn that, and then press the starter button. Here's a little, a little tidbit for you. If you're ever in an F40, and you know, as, as these things happen, if you're in an F40 and you want to shut the door, you have, to, you have to be quite firm. So you have to grab it near the hinge. So here, the hinge is the, not the hinge, the sort of locking mechanism is there. Grab it with your hand here and then pull really hard. Like, and you've got to keep pulling sort of through the mechanism. Some people just sort of pull hard and then let go. And if you keep pulling, then you can look out the little, the way you check. You can see a bit better on that one. You've got to make sure all of the panels, the door gap lines up. And then, you're ready to go for a drive. Welcome to the inside of the F40, or well, my F40, not even just an F40, and it's a blue one as well. Let's give you my thoughts on the car. Now, I don't know whether you can really hear me. I've got this little mic on here and the mic here and I'll try and blend them. Hopefully you can hear something of what I'm saying. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a relatively easy car to drive if, you're, if you take into the fact its performance and the, the fact that it's got no aids and all of those sorts of things. So to start off with, steering, I'm driving at 20 miles an hour, speed limit right now, and the steering is really quite light. It gets, it's an unassisted steering rack, so it's heavy when you start off, but the front tires aren't massive, so it's not huge loads when you start up. Gear shift, we've got this amazing gated gear shift, and it makes a really good, it's a dog leg gear shift. And the first time I drove the car, I put it in first, and then nearly reversed into a wall. I only, luckily, I only moved like, I don't know, two centimeters before I realized I was going the wrong way. So back and left is first and that means second and third is forward and backwards and when you're sort of driving quickly on a country road or something like that it means that you're just going forward and backwards and it's the easiest change and I would say second and third is pretty much the speeds you would sort of be doing on a normal country blast in town you occasionally have a blip and change down to first there we go the steering wheel, there's literally nothing on it. The interior on this car, there's just nothing there at all. You've got, we have got aircon, which someone was, some people are surprised at, and it works, it works well. It was, 
in the UK we've been having some hot weather recently and I went out and it was probably about 30 and that was a bit it did struggle a little bit but it's now sort of 20 degrees outside and the aircon is, is totally fine uh, it takes a bit of time for the car to warm up and then you'll just start hearing pops and bangs boom 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 the entire time but in terms of what we've got in here we've got a bit of switch gear this this is the the fun stick i guess this is just the lights you, you twizzle it to turn them on and then they pop up and then you lift it up and they go all the way on sorry they were off so up is off you twist it to turn the lights on and then down pops them up turns the lights on turn the lights off they pop back down it's the sort of iconic f40 thing it's the pop-up headlights obviously that and the engine sort of 480 horsepower something like that mine's on straight pipes so i don't know whether i think that probably gives you less torque but more up end horsepower i don't know it might not do anything what it does do is create an unbelievable noise <laughs> Uh, it's starting to warm up now and you can start to hear those pops and bangs. <laughs> it's just first gear, just 20 miles an hour cruising along. I've got my phone up with Waze on over here, which is my miles per hour speedo because it's in kilometers an hour and it's, it's sort of accurate, but it's quite small and you have to do the conversions all the time. I don't, I don't really want to put some stickers on it, so I just put up Waze. That gives you my speed I'm going pretty much, and I use that for speed cameras and whatever, just making sure. The pedals, because you've got these three metal pedals, and the clutch pedal, this was the first car I'd driven, which, when you're driving something for 20 minutes, half an hour, fine, you don't really think about it too much, but, this is the first car I've driven where I now always put it pretty much into neutral for traffic lights. I know you sort of should, in theory, do that, but loads of cars, like whether it's a Boxster or something, or your A3 or something like that, um, as, it, as you can see, everyone loves the car. Everyone just nothing but smiles for a blue F40. Yeah, so the, it's a really quite heavy clutch. Before this, Obviously, I have a, a GT3 RS 997, which is, is, is reasonably heavy, I would say. But that was fine. You just leave it down, left foot, whatever, no problem. This, it gets tiring pretty quickly. So I generally pop it into neutral. There we go. Brakes. The brakes in this car are not the best, I would say. When you consider the amount of go you've got, is the amount of slow you've got. You get a lot of shove. The 500 horsepower comes in, but it comes in like a freight train of boost. And just normally, if you just go nothing, 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 so let's say you put it in first and you're going no miles an hour and then you slam on, slam your foot down the accelerator, when the boost comes in, you're gonna break traction. Second, it's gonna do the same thing. Unless your tires are really warm, you, you can't, it can't take all in second. sort of measure your inputs you get really it's actually quite progressive it's not it's not too bad it doesn't just suddenly fizz and snap unless you are trying to aggravate it you're trying to really put your foot down so is it a beast yes it is a beast um, I was <laughs> a while ago going over is, is it Battersea Bridge I think it's Battersea Bridge sort of it's quite smooth at the time and the car's tires were cold and I just gave it a bit, not tons, and it just, just like, oh, a bit light. The back sort of sliding around. One, how does it handle? Well, obviously right now I'm pulling around. It handles like any car when you're pulling around. It's not really a particularly difficult car to drive. Like the steering is very light, but the thing that makes this such an experience on a country B road, I wouldn't say, it's not the car to drive around town. It's just, that's not what it's designed for, especially with this exhaust setup. It's, it's actually 
almost sort of pa- not painfully it's not painful in your ears inside but I'm aware of how visible it makes the car and I'm not really that sort of person so that's probably why you don't see me driving it in town very much and mainly why it lives out of town but when you're on a good B road the steering is sort of jiggling with all the road you get all this feedback because it's just not assisted you've got nothing just boom, 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 boom. you've got no assisted brakes which means you've really you've really got a stamp on the brakes it will stop but you've just got to you've got to really give it some obviously a bit progressive and then the full power but it's kind of it's the best car i've driven down a, a british country road as an exper- as a complete experience by quite a margin it's not the car i necessarily want to do loads of long journeys in maybe if i change the exhaust it wouldn't be so bad just that 20 minute blast 30 minute blast on a sunday morning no one around it is phenomenal you get the blare of the exhaust and then the turbo intake sound and then it's just fizzing of the tires and you just sort of and and all of this is that and i know I've, i've had some sort of commenters on some of the videos i've done saying slow down you're being dangerous blah 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 in none of the videos have i done have i been driving driving unreasonably fast like i've I don't know why you would record yourself driving above the speed limit or you know excessively above the speed limit because that's a pretty stupid thing to do so I don't do it. All of this is at sort of 60 miles an hour. Now you do sometimes you have to sort of slow down a bit so you could speed up a bit and that sort of thing but just 60 miles an hour this suspension this car it's the suspension is quite old school so it's not that well damped and it just sort of jiggles a little bit so if you go around a corner and you hit a bump sometimes the back of the car might sort of pick itself up shift itself six inches to the left and drop back down again which is a real buck clench moment and that sort of combined with all of the the value of the car the value of the car is something that i i think about a lot it's probably i wish it wasn't worth what it was because then i would think about it less (laughs) and there you go the back stepping out a little bit under power just on the up ramp it's and as you can see it's not it's not scary like okay it could be scary if you're not used to that sort of thing but if you've got competent at driving it's really quite something and now we've got now you can hear the pops and bangs and in traffic What's it like in traffic? Well, I'm in traffic now. I just got to deal with it, really. It's um, it, it it doesn't overheat. Generally, it sort of just maintains its temperatures pretty well. Fuel, it's got two. I believe there's two 60 litre bags that sort of share that are connected, which means you can fill it up from either side. But it does take. If you just put a put the fuel pump in and did it till it clicked. I think the last time I did it, I managed to get an extra 20 litres in after that just by sort of clicking and clicking and clicking. And what happens is it's settling in the, ta- in the two tanks and then you can fill it up. Or you can do the... Another thing you can do is you can pop both fuel tanks open. That helps get some of the air out the other end. But also you could just put two, two tanks, in, one in either side. I had this thing a while ago now. I was using the Tesco... Uh, was it Tesco? BP automated app and I put so much fuel in I think this car will take like 100 litres or well it'll take 120 but I would got really low and I'd using the automated app and it has a 100 pound limit or something and that was over the limit and then I redid it and did it again and then it banned me from the app for basically putting too much fuel in a car because cars shouldn't take that much fuel well 120 litres in an F40 doesn't last that long just sort of aware that it goes down when you get to naught funny fact you've still got something like 40 liters left so (laughs) you've got what most people would have in a tank left when you get to naught which makes unless you've measured the the distance you've driven makes it a little bit interesting trying to calculate fuel so you probably end up filling up a lot more but interior there's nothing in here we've got some wind-up handles some like carbon kevlar everywhere 
the little door pulls to open the doors. I've had quite a few people get in the car, try and shut the door, and they'll pull that cable, and obviously it just slams and bounces back open. Uh, I've had someone get in the car, not shut it properly, and I, I didn't notice, and they, because it sounded like they'd done it properly, and I didn't, I didn't check, and I just went around a, a left-hand turn, and the door swung open. It was quite lucky that that didn't, didn't end badly, but from then on, I was very much like, make sure the door's shut, because it can, it can open, and then also be aware that your passenger, don't, don't try and hold onto that cable for security. What else is there to know? Running costs, it's not too bad. Uh, I do an oil change, change once a year. Obviously, that's got Ferrari tax on it, so it's sort of 1,200 pounds, something like that. Uh, well, the service is about 1,200 pounds. Then every three years, you've got to do the cam belts, but you take off this panel here, so you do, it's not an engine out job. And then that's, that's about 3K to do that. It's, yet again, Ferrari tax, just some rubber belts. And then once every eight to 10 years, you've got to do the fuel tanks which I think last time, I think the Ferrari ones are sort of 8K, something like that, but you can get them for a lot less from a modern manufacturer that makes fuel tanks for F1 cars and that sort of thing, and it's the same. So next time I have to do the fuel tanks on this car, I'm just gonna go for the latest, greatest. I'm not gonna worry about there being a Ferrari badge on it. It doesn't really matter to me. But let's go for a bit of a drive. I haven't driven it much recently and I kind of forget how awesome it is. It's just amazing. I, I haven't driven an F50. I would love to drive an F50. The engine in that car has got to be amazing, but the F40 just looks the bee's knees, goes like stink, and delivers an experience that is just unlike anything else I've come across in when you look at the whole package. Yes, you can get, I think you can get very close, but the sort of, it, it, unfortunate, fortunate, and side effect of the values of these cars is you can't forget about that at all. I, if, when I'm driving it quickly, I sort of forget about the fact that it's expensive, but I do still drive, rein it back a little bit, and I never drive too too mad on country roads anyway, so yeah, it's just an experience. I think I probably should change the exhaust, but it's, it's just mad. It's mad, it's everything it should be, Nothing, it shouldn't. Ride quality, ride quality is actually surprisingly good. Because we've got big sidewalls, going over little bumps and stuff, they just get absorbed by the tire. And if you didn't have the noise and the smell of all the, the car, this car stinks out my garage for like four weeks just parking in it, in it overnight. But all of that stuff, like if you put sound deadening headphones on, so I've got some of the Apple AirPods Pro. And when I drive this car long distance, and actually any car that's loud, no, long distance, I just put those in and put noise cancelling on, and they do a really, really good job of just cutting out a lot of the stuff and making your journey a lot, a lot more chilled. Another side benefit of having those headphones on is if you put it into sort of talk mode, it actually amplifies the engine note. Like it's louder than it should be. <laughs> it produces a lot of smiles, a lot of smiles per gallon in this car, although it uses a lot of gallons at the same time. Oh, I was gonna get rid of it. I don't know, I don't know. I think if someone gave me the right offer, it would probably go and I'd change it for something else, but the more I use it, the better it gets and it's just, it's iconic, it's a poster car, it's my poster car. It's very good, it's very good. And there we have it. A little drive and review of the F40. Hope you enjoyed that. It is such an incredible car. It's, it's so good, but it's so good in the right situation. It's gotta be 
a nice backcountry road. Yeah, it's, it's fine driving around town and whatnot, but it's not really, in its current spec anyway, that is not really what you want. But it's, you get such amazing feedback from everyone else. Whenever I park up somewhere, normally someone will come over and go, this is like the first F40 I've seen, or wow, it looks so good, or I love F40s. It just gets a lot of great sort of public reaction. Not that that's really what I bought it for, but it's nice when people like your car. As a driving experience, it's sort of all the things you want it to be. It's crazy boost, not sort of hidden and masked by modern electronics. Just, it's that raw, it revs, it really revs, and the, okay, it could rev a bit higher, but that top end is quite something as well. It gets a real fizz and all the powers up top. Ah, oh, it's just, it's just such a blast to drive. It's such a great experience. Obviously, I would recommend it to everyone, um, but if you can ever get a chance to have a go in one or a ride in one, it is every bit as good as people say. It's well worth the name. It's a legend. I love it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more content. I'll be doing this sort of thing every now and then, trying to try and just get like short drives in cars, get my sort of experience, what I think, and then relay that to you guys. I'm spending a lot of time making podcasts at the moment, Car Chat Podcast, interviewing people and all that sort of thing. Go check it out and see you in the next video.